Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the media speaks. If I look if I look as though I'm looking at two cameras at once, uh, that's because I am. Low def but live over here. High def but need to wait forever to render over there. So I'll be talking to both of them live. And I found that you have to say things like this because otherwise you get comments of people as you look like you're looking in two directions at once. Well, Shazam, Sparky, that might be because I am. I can't believe the comments I get. All right, friends, um, Infowars.com. Long exposure to tiny amounts of Monsanto's Roundup may damage liver kidneys, according to a study. Now, why would I lead with this story? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, you, you want some, uh, a little bit of personal commentary, you're going to get it. Because I am, in fact, a commentary show, not a, a news reporting show. My dad was pretty much a non-drinker. I mean, I think in the 39 and a half years that I had him with me, I had seen him drunk four times. It was not common. It was not, it was very, very rare. Now, my dad worshipped at the shrine of Walmart. Christelle, did you ever imagine that anybody could go to Walmart as frequently as dear old dad, rest his soul, did? No. I mean, this man went to Walmart like some people go to church. If he didn't have degenerative disc disease, I think he may have bowed at the front door. He died of gallbladder liver cancer. Both. So, uh, how could that be? That's real common among drinkers. Um, I, get, I hope I never get it. Do Am I an alcoholic? No. Do I drink more than I should? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm in a band. I work as a DJ. Um, Christelle will say, I'm not an alcoholic, but it would probably be wise to drink a tad less. And I, even you, Christelle, may be a little less than you do, depending on when you do it. Depending on when. I... If I'm going to drink, I want to drink. And then there is Dad, who drank. Did you ever see? She she didn't know Dad real well before we got to. Did you ever see him drink? I don't think so. He didn't drink at all. He died of liver cancer. That's like unheard of. Well, listen to this. Given even low levels of exposure, Roundup can potentially result in organ damage when it comes to liver, kidney, and function. How many of you are just going to the store like every other American, like me, like all of us do? You went to the store, you're stocking up on your favorite foods. Let me fix a uh, low def mic. Sorry, guys. You're stocking up on your food, and you don't know that what you're eating is absolutely toxic to your liver. Why should you listen to me? I'm some guy you've never heard of before doing a show. Well, let me tell you why the show is called The Correct Views because I have sources to back this up. I'm not out here being an alarmist for nothing. You wanna know how much I made for this show today? Nothing. Do you wanna know what Christelle got paid? It's real easy, it's nothing. So why would we do it? We do it because there are a number of you that subscribe. I've got like 85,000 hits. I don't know, something pathetic. I've got 498 subscribers. Somebody's hearing it, and it matters. Nobody knows who my dad was, but guess what? It matters to me that he died. Ask my brother if it matters to him that he doesn't have his dad around anymore. You know what? Yeah, I can pretty much speak for him. He does. He thinks it sucks, and I do too. If you, if you know somebody, if you care about somebody that just, they're not even eating bad. They just eat. They go to the store, they eat. They're not even eating badly. My dad was a diabetic and he stuck to his diabetic diet. That's pretty damn healthy. Liver cancer. Why? Well, here we go. Long-term intake of the Monsanto's most popular Roundup herbicide, even in very small amounts, lower than permissible in U.S. water, may lead to kidney and liver damage, a new study claims. Well, for those of you that don't know, um, most of the food, unless it's organic, that you are eating and drinking are made from genetically altered. They're called genetically modified organisms. Genetically changed. That means that the, um, 
the corn that you're eating wasn't just some seed that was put onto the ground and into the ground and grown. No, 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 no. You're eating a genetically modified version of corn, unless your for unless your corn is organic, and that's damaging your body every time you eat it. Eat it. It has pesticides in it, Roundup, and they are saying that small amounts of Roundup, the minuscule amounts that you find in GMOs, are not bad for you. Well. Let's look at this study, shall we? The research conducted by an international group of scientists from the UK, Italy, and France studied the effects of prolonged exposure to small amounts of the Roundup herbicide in one of its main components, glyphosate. In their study, and there's links to this, published in the Environmental Health on August 25th, the scientists particularly focused on the influence of Monsanto's Roundup on gene expression in the kidneys and liver. What they've done is they've made these plants and uh, GMOs resistant to glucophyte and Roundup. So that the farmers who buy this can spray large amounts of that on the crops and it won't stop the crop from growing and it'll stop the bugs from eating it. That's great on paper except for the fact that it'll shut down your liver and you won't have a dad like my brother and I. For those of you on low def, I don't know why this headset is broken, but it seems to be broken and it's bouncing all over my face and I look like an idiot. So feel free to laugh at me in the comment line. In the new two-year study, which extended the findings from one conducted in 2012, the team added tiny amounts of Roundup to water that was given to our rats in doses much smaller than allowed in U.S. drinking water. In other words, the rats were giving, given less of the poison than what you are eating in your food. And it's not just corn. I just keep using corn because that's the most common one. It's pretty much everything you eat that isn't organic. Scientists say that some of the rats experience 25% body weight loss, presence of tumors, over 25% body weight, hemographic bleeding, or prostration. And what's, what's great to me, and this is what amazes me, is I get these ridiculous boneheads on my comment line that want to talk about, no, he's got long hair, he's got tattoos, he talks funny, he's ugly. Who could find this ugly? Oh, don't everybody raise your hands at once. I, nobody will address the actual facts. Do you realize I'm telling you that the food that you're eating is going to kill you? And that there are things you can do to stop it. One of the things you can do to stop it is to share this video and ask other people to do the same damn thing. Um, you can spend a little bit more and buy organic. Do I mean buy organic all the time? No, because you probably can't afford to because the people that raise organic gouge you and that is what they do. But that's another story. Buy organic just a couple of meals out of your month. The, if everyone listening to my voice, even though there's not that many of you, if every single one of you were to do that, that would alone would make a substantial cut. Because this, these videos get around, believe it or not. Even though I talk funny. Um, if everyone that gets this video would do that, that would be one thing. Sharing it would be another. If enough people dive into their market share, which is the only thing that these creatures understand, then we win. It's a numbers game, friends. It's always been a numbers game. You knew that before you tuned in. The study's conclusions indicate that there is an association between wide-scale alterations in liver and kidney gene expression and the consumption of small quantities of Roundup. Even at admissible, that would be allowed for you Usher fans, glucophate equivalent concentrations, even at levels that are below what they say is safe, was deadly. Your liver cancer is quite safe. That's why I don't have a dad anymore. 
as the dose used in environmentally relevant in terms of human domesticated animals and wildlife levels of exposure, the results potentially have significant health implications for animal and human populations, the study warned. And there's been other studies. Look up French rats GMO. When you see the tumors on these white rats, you will vomit. This is what you're eating. Bon appetit. There were more than 4,000 genes in the liver and kidneys of the rats that were fed Roundup, whose levels of expression had changed. The study's leading scientist, Michael Antonow, it's uh, A-N-T-O-N-I-O-U for those of you better at foreign languages than me, which is anyone, Head of the Gene Expression and Therapy Group at King's College in London. This long-haired guy doesn't give any sources. He's a jerk. The Gene Expression and Therapy Group at King's College London is your source. I'd hardly call them hacks. No matter what you call me, eat it. I'm right. Given even very low levels of exposure, Roundup can potentially result in organ damage. That might be your liver. When it comes to liver and kidney function, oh, it is your liver, he added. The severity we don't know, but our data say that there will be harm given enough time. So go ahead. Uh, those of you that think I'm crazy, then go ahead and think I'm crazy. But at least somebody warned you. If you're not eating organic, which nobody can afford to do within reason, this is what you're eating. This is what's all around you. This is why you have loved ones dropping like flies of diseases that we didn't see that prevalent prior to this. We didn't. Friends at Yahoo.com, Russia moves foreign deter removes foreign detergents from shops, citing risks. Um, uh, Putin, and, and many of you know I already feel this way, Putin is nothing more than a Russian Obama. Obama is jockeying to get closest to brown nosing in the coming new world order. And it's the same thing that Russia is doing. They're just doing it differently. Well, the Russian authorities have this right. They have begun to remove foreign brands of detergents from stores claiming that they pose health risks. And again, the whole show is not going to be about poisoning your food and your detergents. So don't, don't zone out on me here. But I think it's relevant to say that I've completely switched over to non, uh, to organic, I should say, shampoos. I don't use uh, non-organic toothpaste anymore. I don't want this crap and stuff that's directly going into my bloodstream. And my hair has always been exactly the way you see it, so I wash it daily. And I just decided that these things were deadly based on the study that I've seen. Well, now you have a whole nation doing it. And it's not just America. They're, they're pulling things out that have the ingredients that come from anybody, whether it's America or not, that are putting these things in. And there's a reason for it, because they're freaking deadly. That's the reason. The Russian Consumer Protection Agency, there's another source, said in a statement Tuesday, that recent inspections of selected goods by top foreign brands such as Colgate, Deadly, Palmolive, Deadly, and Procter & Gamble, even more deadly, have found high levels in toxic ingredients in them. That's because they're poison. Moscow extended its ban earlier this year on selected food imports on 28 nation European and other countries. And I agree with them completely. Uh, my, my wife, the beautiful Christelle, uh, always gets these little skin things on her and she's always picking on them and she's like well you know I really like the smell of this detergent stop buying non-organic detergent and see if it goes away because I mean we, we now have the nation of Russia agreeing with me and I would say that's a good reason to call the show the correct views um, friends, I got a Rand Paul update two stories in a row here um, buzzfeednews.com Rand Paul, Black Lives Matter, should change its name. He suggests all lives matter, or perhaps the name Innocent Lives Matter. Now, see, this is the kind of thing that many of us, many, many, many of us, have wished that Rand had done since day one. Planned Parenthood, 
are terrible. They cut up babies. They stop the beating heart. Okay, I get it. I didn't like it when the Nazis did it. Not a real big fan of it now that Planned Parenthood's doing it. I think that Planned Parenthood should not be funded by the federal government. If the states want to fund it, that is up to the states. And if the states want to fund it and not fund the abortion part of it, that is also up to the states. Federal government doesn't need involved in it. But no, Rand Paul used the five minutes that the media gave him before Trump blew up to talk about Planned Parenthood. Now, this might sound cold, and it is cold, but unfortunately, many things that are true are also, in fact, cold. We care more about getting the wall built. We care more about our jobs, and we care more about the people that are already living in the country than we do about the people that Planned Parenthood are unfortunately killing. We would like to not starve to death since our mother didn't get an abortion. Maybe we would like to have a good job. Once you focused on that, then you can do whatever the hell you want with Planned Parenthood. But no, Rand Paul did it the other way, and now he's sinking like a Zeppelin. And before I get a bunch of hate mail that I'm talking crap about Rand, I'm going to vote for him over Trump. Okay, I'm going to vote for him in the primary, so shut up, leave me alone. The trouble is... Rand isn't going to get it because Rand wasn't speaking about things like this, which I'm about to get into, because now he's finally sounding like the Rand Paul that we wanted him to sound like, the Rand Paul that would actually win an election, and you're not going to win an election about Planned Parenthood that's not going to get you in office. Oh, my God, he's finally speaking like Rand, and it's too damn late. Washington Republican presidential candidate Rand Paul said on Wednesday night that the Black Lives Matter movement should change its name. I think they should change their name maybe if they were All Lives Matter or Innocent Lives Matter, Paul said during appearance on Sean Hannity's Fox News show. I'm about justice and frankly I think a lot of poor people in our country and many African Americans are trapped in this war on drugs and I want to change it. By commandeering the microphone and bullying people and pushing people out of the way, I think that really isn't the way to get their message across, which is, of course, what they did to Bernie Sanders. When he looked like such a pushover, he guaranteed that even though I wasn't going to vote for him before, he's got even less chance of me voting for him now. Uh, I've appeared with many members of the Congressional Black Caucus to talk about criminal justice. I've been to Harvard University. I've discussed it in Chicago and other cities. And so I'm more than willing to discuss it. But having people take the microphone, again, like Black Lives Matter did to Bernie Sanders, they need to go somewhere else, and they need to rent their own microphone, Paul said. Hannity had asked Paul about comments he made in an interview with a local Seattle TV station in which he criticized the tactics of some activists that have used on the campaign trail Paul had said in an interview, do I think it's a good idea for people to jump up and commandeer a microphone? No, and I wouldn't let them take my microphone, nor should he. Black Lives Matter activists, of course, have become the, uh, what have they become, the hate group of America. They're just hiding behind the fact that they're doing it for race. And don't tell me I'm racist. I've got 9 million black people, not really 9 million, but out of my throngs of listeners, many are black. How's that? And uh, they agree with me completely. Otherwise, they just wouldn't subscribe and they tell me they hate me. Uh, Theinquisitor.com. Most of the people that hate me are usually white. Rand Paul promises to shut down NSA data center if he becomes president. Rand, why? Why, why, why was Planned Parenthood your leading? Why didn't you sound like this three weeks ago? I love you and I want to hang you. You can tell that Jesse Benton is in fact still on the campaign by the terrible decisions that have been done. And I'm telling you, God only knows what I'm going to say this show. I'm already pissed. Oh my God. I get Christelle has got to be like dying of laughing because I am just furious right now. Everything I'm about to report on through the entire end of the show pisses me off. Republican Senator Rand Paul has been one of the few local vocal critics of the U.S. government's spying programs. He's the only presidential candidate that has made NSA spying a central topic of his campaign. 
No, it has not been a central topic of his campaign. If it had, he might be leading Donald Trump right now. But he's not, because he was focusing on Planned Parenthood. NSA spying is so important to Rand that he's promised to shut down the NSA data center if he becomes president. After he stops the indoctrinated collection of Americans' data, he'll convert the data center into a constitutional center where the Fourth Amendment is studied. Do you know how funny that is? The NSA violates the Fourth Amendment. That is your right to not be spied upon without warrant. Rand Paul said he's going to shut the NSA down and turn their building into a constitutional study that's a constitutional center that studies the Fourth Amendment. Now see that right there is the kind of biting truth that have endeared Rand Paul to people the globe over. And in America, we love him. And Trump has stepped right over him because he has stopped sounding like Rand Paul. He has sounded like somebody who is, uh, is focusing on Planned Parenthood. What's my problem with Planned Parenthood? Do I like dead babies? My problem with Planned Parenthood, no, I do not like dead babies. My problem with Planned Parenthood is that they do a lot of good for a lot of women. And when you are early on in the debates and people are just getting to know you, because not everybody's a little political junkie like I am. Christelle knows who Rand Paul is. I know who Rand Paul is. I've known for years. For the average female voter, and that's about half of us roughly, in case you haven't noticed, roughly, half of the population has no idea who Rand Paul is. If he attacks Planned Parenthood as his lead-off topic, which is what most of them heard of him from. He took a chainsaw to the tax code. Everybody loved it. Then he started talking about Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood prevents a lot of cancers. Planned Parenthood helps a lot of women with things like DNCs and pap smears and things that guys don't like to talk about, but women love to talk about. Um, the... It, it turns off the female voter because she's not understanding that you're talking about you are against killing a baby mere moments before it's born and cutting its brain out. That's not what they hear. What they hear, Rand and Jesse Benton, you moron, is that you are trying to shut down the only avenue they have to making sure they don't have cervical cancer. You can deal with this once you are leading the pack. To lead with this the way Rand did is idiotic, and yes, I'm on record for saying it, because half the voting population thinks you want to shut down their clinic, Rand. They didn't hear anything you said. All they heard was that now they're going to vote for Trump, you moron. Questions of whether the spying programs were unconstitutional have been swirling since 2013 when Edward Snowden made details about the programs public. Snowden is the NSA contractor who copied large amounts of classified documents onto his thumb drive. We all know who he is. He's the guy that Donald Trump wants to harass for no reason whatsoever, which is why I'm not excited about the fact that I may be voting for Donald Trump or Gary Johnson because Rand Paul threw his runaway talking about Planned Parenthood. For those that are bothered by the NSA spying programs, Paul seems to be the only candidate that would work to stop it. For the senator, it's a major problem that affects virtually all Americans. We agree with you, Rand. That's why we love you, Rand. Could you please keep talking about this, Rand? That would make us really happy, Rand. Last year, Paul filed a lawsuit against the Obama administration over the bulk collection of Americans' phone records. We wish you would have been t reminding us of that, Rand. We wish you would have been bringing voters into your cause and our cause that way, bonehead. Paul also staged a filibuster to delay the renewing of the Patriot Act. Uh, and, and, of course, now all we got was the U.S. Freedom Act, which is almost just as bad. And he's getting annihilated. Listen to this. After some early success in the early campaign trail, before he was yamming on about Planned Parenthood as his flagship topic, much of Rand's thunder has been taken away. Donald Trump is stealing some voters who would most likely support Rand. Why? Because Trump's out there talking about immigration and taxes. Well, Rand is good on taxes. I know, but he wasn't out there talking about it, was he? He chainsawed it once and then left it behind. 
Since Trump is much louder and entertaining than Paul, it's unlikely that he or any of the other Republican candidates can start beating Trump in the polls. In other words, they agree. He's waited too damn long turning off female voters that didn't know what he was really talking about because Jesse Benton, his campaign manager, is an idiot. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views and Sam I B on fire today. That would be me. Friends, I've got a few stories left for you. I do want to ask you real quick to check out Sticker Junkie. You Why? Because Sticker Junkie, they made these awesome looking stickers. And they can make you awesome looking stickers. Maybe you want to help Rand Paul. Good. Print some up and stick them everywhere. He needs them. Um, sticker Junkie. I can't say enough good things. I want to remind everybody that we're giving away Passing Time stickers. We're giving away the Passing Time Alexandrian Solution and the Pop Relief Itself ticket for the Cleveland Agora. For anybody that can do a bunch of crazy things and prove that you love Passing Time Band, can you prove that you love our band? Because if you can, we are going to give you stickers. We're going to get you Pop Relief Itself's autograph. I don't know if it's all the members or just one of them, but I guarantee I got an email confirmation you'll get one of them go out there and prove you love passing time let me know at the correct views at hotmail.com what all you did and you it's correct views at hotmail.com you listening to this may win a whole bunch of really cool stuff also do me a favor look up the work of Mike McLaughlin you can find him M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N Mike McLaughlin writes some of the best fiction he writes poetry he writes political rants that may even put mine to shame and you need to find him let him know you heard about him on the correct views friends listen to this local police institute no refusal blood draws until the end of summer now i have a couple of problems with this it says vampire cops warn residents that they have their fourth amendment violated at will this is alan salazar infowars um how many of you know that there is a very small population, uh, a percentage of the population, I should say, called hemophiliacs. It's what the Sleeping Beauty was based on. Some people, if you draw blood from them incorrectly, it doesn't stop bleeding. It's, uh, it's not likely to kill them in this day and age. But it could if, they, uh, if it happened far from a hospital. But they can normally get it stopped. But they have a very hard time getting it stopped. What I'm trying to say is if someone's a hemophiliac and they start drawing blood from them, you could have a really messed up somebody's night and or week, depending on how badly uh, they're affected by it. Not to mention, who, are you a phlebotomist? Because if these police officers aren't phlebotomists, they're not trained to handle your blood. The roadside check is not a clean clinic. And I know this. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Not only was my dad a nurse, but when I got my degree from Stark State, there were phlebotomists, and they would draw blood from me. They would say, can I draw blood from you? Because I need to draw blood from so many willing people to get my degree. And I, they always had pretty face and great big googly eyes, please, and I fell for it every time, and I got poked like a pincushion by every phlebotomist at Stark State. There's a pushover, I'll pick him, it always worked. Um, they have to be done properly and in the right environment by somebody that is trained to do it. A cop is not trained to draw your blood and conclude anything from it any more than a phlebotomist is trained to arrest you. For those reasons, this is a terrible idea. Uh, the Austin, Texas Police Department has announced the implementation of a no-refusal policy by the end of summer, which means they can attack you with needles against your will, by which officers can forcibly extract blood samples and breath tests from drivers without consent. This is why we've got to get someone like Rand Paul in. And we're not doing it. We're doing the exact opposite. We've got to get someone like Rand Paul in. Because, friends, if this keeps going on, this is going... I mean, what, at what point is it? It's not even our country anymore. The No Refusal Initiative, as if an initiative trumps your Fourth Amendment rights, is an effort to enforce DWI laws, which shouldn't be there. 
keep the public safe, always, and to conduct blood search warrants on suspects who refuse to give a breath or blood specimen as required by law. Well, the law has no right to require these things from you. If a cop thinks that you are drunk, then he can pull you over, but they can't just insist to have this and still call it uh, a constitutional right. States' rights and initiatives do not trump your constitutional right. What part of that are you people too damn stupid to understand? The high number of DWI arrests are made in Austin each year. That does not negate your Fourth Amendment right, whether that is true or not. No refusal means police can forcibly extract blood or breath samples against a person's will after they have refused, enabling law enforcement to secure evidence which may aid in first further prosecution. That's what the Nazis used to do. That's what Stalin did. That's what Mao did. Hell, that's what they did to crucify Christ. Why not keep it going, right? A judge is typically on hand to sign warrants, an effort to give blood draws an air of legitimacy in the face of Fourth Amendment violations, as if any judge can just override your God-given right, and that is in fact what you guys went to school, right? It's a God-given right. But this judge, I guess, is, he's over God. DWI attorney Jamie Balagia, Balagia maybe, who specializes in contesting DWI cases, has said that no refusal policy basically amounts to police telling the public, we're going to take your blood no matter what you do. And he says, I've never seen a judge say no to a warrant for blood draws. So the, the, the judge is now a phlebotomist. He knows about blood, right? He knows better than you. Why not have a chimpanzee rubber stamp these warrants? Because they are not turning down or rejecting any of them. The San Antonio-based former cop turned attorney's website, which is DWIDo.com, whatever you do, remember that, informs the public that they still have rights when faced with a no-refusal traffic stop, despite being suspected of driving under the influence. You have the right to refuse to answer questions about whether you have been drinking, perform any field sobriety tests, and give the police permission to search a car, the attorney's site advises, among other things. As Belasia explains, once a warrant is obtained, police must prove beyond reasonable doubt that you were driving while intoxicated. If the police get a warrant, you have to submit a sample of your blood, he says. Nonetheless, this warrant can later be challenged in court, dwidu.com and may result in any blood results being excluded from a trial or subsequent in hearing, subsequent in hearings related to the DWI in Texas. He also lists a number of objections, is a link here, which can be brought before court to strike down a blood draw evidence from the record, including ensuring the trained phlebotomist followed all correct procedures, in addition to confirming that a proper lab setup was used. A big myth in Texas is the DUI, DWI case is that the blood test results are more reliable than any other chemical DWI testing. And this simply is not true, he says. There are many things that can cause a high blood alcohol content result in the blood tested artificially, which means that they can be extremely unreliable. Uh, DWI dude, he's one of the heroes of the country. Donate to him, support him, he's one of the good ones. Friends, KitDanielsPrisonPlanet.com, Marijuana Kills Cancer, says the National Cancer Institute. I was trying to warn people on a recent Fukushima update, and the next report that I do is going to be the massive Fukushima update. It's Wednesday. It's probably going to be both Wednesday and Thursday because it's huge this month. This bonehead decided to go on and on about marijuana. And I have no idea why, because the report that I posted had nothing to do with marijuana whatsoever. But he didn't, no matter what nuke fact I gave, he somehow started talking about marijuana, which is typically what idiots do when they think they know something and they don't. Um, this would even shoot down the argument that somehow I was talking about marijuana when I wasn't, I don't know, but crazy dude, this one is for you. The Institute recently updated its frequently asked questions about marijuana page to include various studies revealing how cannabis may inhibit tumor growth 
by causing cell death, blocking cell death, and blocking the development of blood vessels needed for the tumors to grow. Who is that institute? The National Cancer Institute. The laboratory study of CBD is estrogen, an estrogen receptor positive and estrogen receptor negative breast cancer cells shows that it caused cancer cell death while leaving little effect on normal breast tissue, the NCI stated. Studies in mouse models of metacystic breast cancer, that is breast cancer that uh, spreads like an octopus's tentacles, showed that cannabinoids may lessen the growth number and spread of tumors. Their full list, according to the NCI, studies in mice and rats have shown that cannabinoids may inhibit tumor growth by causing cell death. I, we, uh, they just repeated that. I'm not going to read it again. A study in mice showed that cannabinoids may protect against inflammation of the colon and may have potential in reducing the risk of colon cancer and possibly its treatment which is great because if you get the wrong kind of colon cancer, you can spend the rest of your life uh, having your bowel movements in a bag, so that's important. The laboratory study of Delta-9, THC, and hepatocellular carcinoma, that would be liver cancer, to tie it back together, shows that it damaged or, that it damaged or killed the cancer cells the same study of Delta-9-THC in mice models of liver cancer showed that it had an anti-tumor effects. Delta-9-THC has been shown to cause these effects by acting on molecules that may be found in non-cell lung cancer cells and breast cancer cells. So, my dad I was talking about earlier, did he smoke weed? No, he did not. Never, not once actually. Kind of interesting, isn't it? The laboratory study of CBD and estrogen receptor positive and can the breast cancer talks about how it, it's another study for it. And lastly, um, in human galoma cells showed that when given along with which therapy, CBD may make chemotherapy more effective. So if you're going the chemo route, it may help that too. And many people do not want to go the chemo route. <laughs> 